You want details? Bye. I drive a Ferrari, 355 Cabriolet. What's up? I have a ridiculous house in the South Fork. I have every toy you can possibly imagine. And best of all, kids, I am liquid. So, now you know what's possible. Let me tell you what's required. Life advice is lifeadvicerr at gmail.com. That is the email address to send in your dilemmas. We had one that I really want to do, but I just, I don't know. It was, uh, it was good, good instincts on you, Kyle, to send it, but you sent it with an alert of, can we? And so, uh, I don't know. I, I guess, did we do the Spotify playlist discussion yet? We, we didn't. No. Should we do no. two seconds on this yeah. real quick? What was the goal, Saruti? What was, <laughs> what was the premise of this? They asked, was it for personalities? It was for the ringer. Oh, yeah. the ringer? oh now well, I feel bad. Yeah, Wait, no, you guys so, got asked by Spotify for playlists? Well, just Ryan, not me. Not me. I would have gladly given them anything. But they wanted a Ryan workout playlist, right? And it was like, you know, 10 to 15 songs of just like basically like Max Day, I think is the way that you put it. Um, Max Goff, Day was the title. Yeah. Yeah, like Goff did one. Uh, Bill did a, his, his like top 10 Pearl Jam songs, like his personal top 10. So everybody was like doing playlists and they're going to be up on Spotify on the ring. Not everybody. Um, Kyle, we'll get you involved. Don't worry about it. I like want you Kyle's yours everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yours are on Twitter. It's like they don't have Twitter or ears. The fact that whatever. Let's talk about Ryan's playlist. Spotify doesn't even follow me, so don't worry about it, buddy. Okay. All so right. yeah, there you go. So uh so so Ryan did his his Max Day playlist and heavily featured what, like some limp biscuit, a lot of limp biscuit in there. I think there it was, was partially ironic, but also yeah. like one of those, like actually I, I still kind of do like some limp biscuit songs. I'm with you on that. Some of them are good. They're good workout songs. What can I say? Sue me. Um, was there a nickelback song? I don't even know, but like it was a it was a weird playlist, to be honest. Alien Ant Farm. Love Alien Ant Farm. Movies, yeah. great song. It was it was meant to kind of poke fun at that genre, that lane there for a few years, the early 2000s. Um, there was one song on there that I was kind of like, wait, this song is awesome. So what's what am I doing wrong here? By the way, I need help from Saruti. If I want to post a Spotify song that I'm listening to in that moment and I want to put it on my Instagram story with music, is that now not possible? Is there some uh. copyright thing? No, you can still do that. Yeah, but well, it never do... allows me to do it. I don't. Well, you know what? I'm just sound. We're going to stop talking about this right now because I just might as well say we'll I've, do this offline. <laughs> yeah, because I couldn't be like, hold on, I gotta, I gotta fuck reload the coal stove <laughs> in the back. <laughs> so we'll just, we'll just stay away. The point is, is that I've never had more reaction. I think of anything I've ever done than that playlist. It's ridiculous. The number of people that have reached out about that playlist, and I'll tell you, I think I put it together in like four minutes. So maybe I'll do a real, an artsy one or something. But you know what we should do? We should, next time I'm asked to do it, which maybe never now because of what I did this past week, have Kyle do it. And it'll be like Ryan Russillo presents Kyle's Frolic Room Early Start playlist. All right? So there you go. Problem well, solved. Hold on. Right? Do you want to at least let people know what the playlist is? I have it up here now. Bring it go up. Go for it. Uh, there's 11 songs starts off with my way limp biscuit second track in the end lincoln park three shout out evanescence bring me to life you do know that song corn freak on a leash uh duality slipknot mudbane i was never a, a mudbane guy but dig by Roland. the way that that mudbane song is good <laughs> i'm not i'm not gonna deny it i, I just not a mudbane guy uh rolling limp biscuit again great workout song Papa, Papa Roach, Last Resort, Smooth Criminal, Alien Ant Farm, Higher by Creed, and then you close it out with Limp Biscuit and Faith, which again is kind of a good workout song. I hate to say it, but you think some Faith Limp Biscuit tracks? Wait, you think the Limp Biscuit cover of George Michael's Faith is a good workout song? Um, maybe not, maybe not that one specifically, but like okay. My Way, right. Air, uh, Rolling. What did I have? Uh, Take a look around. I had on one of my Peloton rides the other day. It's it. It's great. It's awesome. And by the way, thanks to you, I just got into Tool again, so I appreciate that. There was no Tool on this playlist, but there should have been. Well, then it would. I can do that to Tool. For <laughs> you want to lump them in with Fred if Durst? You, if you're going to do a Tool playlist, it can only be Tool. All you right, that'll be the next one. You can't do that to Tool. Everybody knows that. Kyle, I can't tell if you love this or you hate this right now. There feels like, I just... There's like an animosity filter coming off of you right now on the Zoom. No, no, no. And it's not that you did it. It's I didn't know that like folks were getting asked. That's what really bums me out <laughs> is that folks were getting asked. He's pissed. I think this is the most upset I've ever seen. You. I just mean, fair? who's run, Who's whose job is it to figure out who should have playlists? Like who's it's somebody's job, right? Somebody's not doing their job. Well, that's all I'm saying. All right. We'll get Kyle on the mix on the next one. It's fine. What can you do? <laughs>
Somebody at Frolic Room asked, told me I was a little repetitive in my music yesterday, and I oh made a whole new thing. I just got a whole new. So Spotify, I'm already thinking about playlists. Is Frolic Room looking for some sort of sponsorship deal with us? Because now, is it fair? I think, you know what? Actually, take the floor here a little bit before we get the advice. What has happened now to Frolic Room's business? Because it, it appears that it's become now a tourist attraction because of the podcast and you. It's funny. It's actually, I've seen a couple people in the last couple um, days. I'll say a week just so I don't sound like I'm there all the time. Um, and <laughs> and it goes the same way. It's a Tweet guy less. and a girl usually. Yeah, probably. Uh, it's a guy and a girl. If it's like a younger guy my age, I'm like, all right, there's at least a 30% chance he's only here because he listens to Life Advice. And I ignore him, whatever. And then like the, a girl's like, hey, do you have a podcast? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, yeah. Todd, he's got it's him. All right. Can we just get get this over with? <laughs> so it's like, hey, hey man, how's it going? But yeah, that's like the it's always like he drag they're in town for something, usually with a girl. He drags her there. <laughs> She's like, Can we fucking do this already? Because now we're just like in the corner looking at at this guy who's sitting by himself at a bar. Like, do you think we could stop this? So she usually breaks the ice and then uh either we stay or it's like on their way out. So um, but yeah, it happens. And then sometimes it's the uh, the old um, distance, long distance jukebox um, donation from somebody. Yeah. So those are the two things, really. All right. Cool. Yeah. I love I love. Can we leave now? All right. Uh, bachelor party question here. All right. Six foot, 165, 35 years old. Body looks like runner uh, with athletic gear on. But when you pop the top of the shirt makes for slight muffin tops married out of my league and we're adding a player to the dugout soon that means she's pregnant kyle i think all of us understood that yeah we got it the issue at hand is deciding whether to be the bigger man or not i played college sports not for the podcast okay he tells us where pretty good pretty good pretty good all right and live with some other guys for all four years we went to different big cities after graduation but have seen each other about twice a year since all right he's 31 my wife and i are getting married uh we're getting married labor day weekend of 2020 uh, which was in the air for COVID. So we kept the date, but just had family and wedding party. The bachelor party was the beginning of July, 2020, as COVID had ramped up and people were understandably cautious. I invited the guys uh, to, into where I live. Most came, but one friend in question here did not. He lives a four hour drive away, but cited COVID and didn't come. I understood. I shortly after found out from a buddy that was in another bachelor party that one week later, he'd flown across the country, albeit a better location, and made it. No mask or anything. Love this guy, but this is typical on his behalf. Does what he wants when he wants and doesn't make any sacrifices, if not for himself or his fiance. His bachelor party is coming up. Do I go? My wife is due in six weeks after the date of the bachelor party. Could use that as an excuse. Suri's going to say life is too short. Kyle will say fuck him. Rosillo, I think you'll lean on going. All right, look, we... Um, we definitely have one guy in the group that was like this. Everything was on his terms, always on his terms, always on his terms. You know, he had a lot of money growing up. And eventually he and I, we, there's no relationship whatsoever. Uh, and I was never invited to anything. And so I, I didn't really host a ton of cool shit because my parents didn't have awesome setups. So um, that wasn't like I was inviting anybody to do anything. But it didn't dawn on me until I kind of looked back retroactively. I'm like, yeah, that kind of sucked. That kind of sucked. But people... You're going to have, if you have enough friends, you're going to have that friend that's in the group that you feel like you're always kind of, you know, figuring out ways to make sure they're okay, because that's it. And it gets a little exhausting, but that's not really what this is. Okay. What this really is about is you denying yourself a weekend with the rest of the guys that you seemingly still get along with really well. And I'm telling you, these weekends start to disappear. All right. I would pay a large sum of money for like my six or seven closest best friends to all get together for a weekend. And I'm just talking about like I would pay the price of attendance and then whatever else it would take because they're almost impossible now uh, at my age, like to get that many guys together. So at 31, I'm telling you, cherish these moments where everybody's going to be able to get together. And just because it's his fucking party, who cares? You're still going to get to see everybody else that's there. So go into it with that. Yeah, he wanted to go to something else, you know, and if the other thing that he went to was going to be awesome compared to the thing that you were doing, you know. I can admit that there be some things that may come up where I go, hey, sorry, man, that I can't make it to this because I'm definitely going to this instead. And if you do it all the time, then maybe you don't become friends anymore. Maybe you could call that person selfish. I totally you're not you're not wrong to feel these things. But what I would say is 
to spite yourself, I think we do this far too often, to spite yourself the enjoyment of a weekend with all your buddies as these become few and far between as you get older and older and the kids start coming around. Don't do that out of spite because you're going to love the option. You're going to wish you had this option in another five or six years as you guys all get older. So go. I was going to say something that was kind of the opposite, but I think you you kind of won me over. But did he say that his baby's going to be six weeks old by the time he's leaving or his baby's due six weeks after the bachelor party is? I forget if it was at whichever end this was on. But either way, I don't think that um, that the wife would. Six would weeks love. after. Six weeks uh, after. So uh, I don't know. That might that might suck, too. Right. I mean, uh, I think the wife would be far more upset after the kid were born mm-hmm. but again i don't know i don't want to get an argument with pregnant yeah on this. i i it's agree not, what not, i was gonna say was all of this what i was gonna say is just say you can't go and cite COVID. i thought that would have been hilarious but uh <laughs> just do the exact same one you don't have to say my kid or whatever just that COVID, dude that would be hilarious if you're Still like crazy hey, out there this COVID <laughs> thing i'm just i want to just check off every precautionary box so and then like really get after it that weekend and post everything on instagram <laughs> see <you> in 23 <laughs> yeah uh no ryan i'm with you i think you nailed everything i mean unless you're like russell westbrook level petty and you're not going to be able to have a good time because you're going to be so annoyed with this guy then yeah all right maybe don't go but if you just want to hang out and have a good time and you're having a kid like i'm i got a couple bachelor parties coming up this year with some close friends and they're like some of the things that i look forward to most like even more than the weddings like it's not, not even that we're doing anything crazy one of them we're going to i think we're going to burlington actually ryan we're just going to hang out on, on the lake and just hang out and drink and just be together uh you're right those the older you get, like we've been trying to plan a vacation with my friends for like five years now and shit just doesn't work out. So the, you need to take advantage of these times when you can just have like a dude's weekend. And this is one of them. And honestly, even if you go, fuck that guy, you don't have to talk to him the entire time. Just talk to your other friends. So I would say enjoy yourself unless you're going to be super petty. Anything else? No. Okay. Seems pretty straightforward. This is just a follow up to that. Apparently, you know, this is what's so great about the podcast, especially, you know, recent history of it. And, uh, just the audience, you know, and the numbers and everything. Uh, how many people hadn't heard the Dirk Bentley story? So we had a lot of follow up to that. And so that's great. And I'm, I'm glad everybody appreciated it. And they actually posted uh, the story from Dirk's Instagram account, which I can pretty much guarantee you he doesn't run. So <laughs> <laughs> I would guarantee that he wasn't like, hey, let me get a shout out to the podcast here. But it's a great story. It's an inspiring story. And um, that's great. And so we had one guy chime in. It was just too good. So I'm glad Kyle sent this one over. He said, listen to your story about unsupportive friends at Dirk Bentley last week. It reminded me of a story my boss told me a few years back about one of his close friends from college who was friends with Jim Henson, the Muppets guy, back in the mid-70s. Apparently, three or four months before he caught national attention and blew up, him, the friend, and a few guys staged what was tantamount to an intervention to get him to chill with the whole frog and pig thing. <laughs> Oh, that is so good. That's so good. We have an announcement at the end of the podcast, too, but we'll do this one quick. 6'2", 180, 185 bench, long arms, also not that strong. 32, hair recently started receding. Beard just started graying. Fathering young kids is starting to show on my gut and face. Needless, I'm not 21, nor do I look it. One of my biggest pet peeves is getting carded at restaurants or bars. These are not the college or spring break places in an air, uh, that inevitably carry more liability for serving minors. Oftentimes, once momentum has been gained with a bartender after the initial meet and greet and the first drink is ordered that momentum is lost through the request to see an id is made but having the id ready at a less busy more sophisticated establishment never seems to work out socially either and makes me feel like a loser i've started tipping accordingly am i being a dick the other night i took my family to a mid-level american fair suburban bar grill which is the (laughs) best description of chilies i've ever heard of uh the kids are obviously mine or maybe applebee's on a date night all right the kids are obviously mine my oldest who's seven was calling me dad clearly i'm not under 21 well you know the waiter, who was about my age or younger, took drink orders for everyone and then asked to see my ID while I started fiddling with my youngest, who was in a high chair. The annoyance clearly showed on my face when I begrudgingly pulled out my wallet with one hand whilst holding my 18-month-old. He then proceeded 
to annoyingly scan the identification for far longer than he needed to and flipping it over multiple times. Needless to say, his tip greatly reflected my annoyance at the circumstance. Sounded like this guy left maybe an 11 percenter here. Mm -hmm. uh, I certainly know it's the law, but what about the unwritten social law that bartenders and wait staff need to be cool and able to read the room? What type of ID checker was a younger Rosillo cooler cautionary? Uh, I was not cautionary. That was sort of policy at the time of the places that I worked at. Um, although one place in the vineyard that I worked at was a little bit more upscale. We had to, you know, we had to, but by the way, back then technology was pretty easy. You'd be like, Oh, stencil. Got it. New Jersey profile pic nineties. Those whoever was pumping out those New Jersey IDs made a killing. Anyway. Uh, you know what I'm going to tell you on this one? If you look that young at 31, that you're constantly getting carded all the time, just understand the annoyance now is going to be worth it for how good you're going to look when you're 50. That's it. You know, like I saw the picture you hear, you look like a young guy. You just look young. You're going to want to look young as you get older. So, yeah, it sucks, and it's a little bit extra. And you probably built it up in your head. You, you're pre-annoyed because you're expecting to happen because it's happening to you all the time. Um, yeah, it'd be great if the person could read the room a little bit better. But the fact that you're holding a, uh, an 18-month-old and you have a 7-year-old that's calling you dad and the fucking server still can't figure it out that you're not 21, that means you're going to look so much better than everybody else when you get to your 40s and your 50s, that's the way you should look at it. Be happy about this, even if it's slightly annoying. And you know what? Hopefully you're at least 15%. That's all. Anything else? I just think you should master the, um, the like, one word. Like, I, I've, I've done it, too, where it's, like, sometimes it's with cigarettes. It's, like, I come in here all the time. Whatever. I know, I know if I forget my wallet and have to use Apple Pay at my go-to 7-Eleven, and it's 50% of the chance, depending on who's which one's working in there, I'm, they're just going to say no. And and that's fine. So And I get it for that because there's cameras on you all the time. But, you know, when, when people are like, can I see your ID or something? I mean, I'm 28, so it's really not it's not crazy. But I'll just do like the, all right. Like, I won't do it like me in mean way, but I, I think I've actually mastered. I think I'm actually elite at it, if you will, is this the like, uh, all right thing where I'm a little surprised. And they get they get it. So I think just get better at doing that all the time. All right. So Rudy, you're a young looking dude. Yeah, no, I, I feel like I probably am in a similar thing to this guy, but I don't, especially places like that, like the big chains, whatever, like they have to be extra careful about this. So I think that they're like they'll cart people in their forties and fifties. I feel like at certain establishments, just because it's the law and they have to cart everybody. Cause they don't want to like, you know, make it seem like, you know, they're only carting people who are young they're we're carting everybody there are no questions asked everybody has to deal, deal with this and just deal with it or don't come to our restaurant i think that's kind of the deal and my only thing was like i wonder if people actually like try to scam by bringing in kids like 18 year olds or like bring in their like you know their kid brother and be like oh yeah this is my kid like i'm able to drink i wonder if that's ever been like a scam before maybe this person has gone through that and seen and they're trying to read through your scam but like clearly it's not that big of a deal if you just take your wallet out show your id and move on and have a drink like chill out dude that's what i would say yeah, you just made me think of an entirely different story, but it's funny how, depending on who you're with, like if you're younger, but you're at a fancy dinner, some people may not card you. You know, I remember I got a hotel with my girlfriend when I was a freshman in college. It was literally packed a weekend bag and walked across the street to like a Sheridan, you know, we were going to have our own formal, I guess. And then we ordered champagne to the room and, you know, we'd already gotten beers from somebody older or something. And the hotel didn't care like they, they rolled in the champagne and we're like whatever and then of course i think she got a stomach ache and it ruined the entire night but <laughs> um i remember but this actually has nothing to do with it but i i don't know i'm trying to think is that my first beer i i don't know how old i was i might have been 14 and i was you know laying brick all day out back hot day you know getting a couple ice waters in you throughout the day just trap rock dust pat it down rubber mallet out there making sure the edges are on the line snapping a tape checking your levels pitch it away from the from the foundation a little bit and then the guy came out and just started handing out high lifes <laughs> i was like what the fuck <laughs> then the guy handed me a high life i didn't know what to do you know and then he said after he gave it to me he was like wait to the foreman because it wasn't my dad i was working i got like subbed out for a week on this thing and the guy was like, wait, is he old enough? And then the guy was like, by the way, the other guy loved to drink. So he didn't give, he was just like, yeah, he's old enough. And I remember like, I remember taking a sip of it being like, fucking people drink this. This is awful. Like, can I get, you know, can I, get, I think I just held on to the thing the entire time. 
Then you get older, you start to like it. So there you go. Big Full time, circle. Man. Okay. Thanks to everybody, Kyle and Steve. Ring or Spotify. And yes, we edited out a life advice that we did that's maybe the best one we've ever done, but we all collectively agreed. <laughs> I just don't, I don't know. We just don't want to even invite into anything of, of being critical of us in this spot for not understanding something. So uh, maybe I shouldn't even be fucking talking about it now. Who knows? The lost tapes. The lost tapes. start a Patreon. It'll be there. Yeah. There you <laughs> one go. Day, it'll, get, it'll, yeah, it'll get dropped on YouTube somewhere. Yep. Show us. We need the missing life advice. <laughs> we didn't even give any advice. We just read the email. And <laughs> no, we're, like, we're, out. No, we're out. I, I, there was nothing to be said. Yep. We got done. We had a great time. And we looked at each other and said, can we air that? We said, we probably could. But there's always a 1% chance somebody will try to take this and turn it into something that it clearly isn't. And so we're not taking that chance. So there you go. The lost tapes. Please subscribe. We'll be back on Thursday. Loaded podcast next couple of days. Uh, Thursday and the Tuesday again. Bill and I every Sunday. 